Okay, so I'm going to make a video to demonstrate something that I've been working on for several months now. I'm going to make my Z80 computer talk to my Motorola Razr over Bluetooth. Now, like I said, this took a pretty long time to figure out, and I finally got it working, and I'm pretty excited about it. So I thought it would be appropriate to demonstrate it today. So first of all, if you're not familiar with Z80 computers or you don't even know what that is, um, don't worry. I'm going to give you a quick rundown. So this is basically a homemade 8-bit computer that I built from scratch. Um, it uses a Z80 CPU. Um, that is a very old CPU from the 1970s, uh, 1976 actually. Back in the day, it was used a lot in like old school arcade machines, really old computers. Uh, most recently, it was used in um, Texas Instruments graphing calculators. But they're very, um, they're very popular 8-bit chips for people who are into retro computing and building computers like this just as projects for fun. And so that's what I've done. Um, I've made a lot of videos on this previously, so if you go back and look through my videos, you'll find some old uh, Z80 computer videos. Um, I think before I demonstrate the Bluetooth, I'm going to very, very briefly just take these boards apart just to kind of show you what's under the hood. I don't think I've ever really shown what's under the hood before, so i got to be careful doing this because I actually tried doing this a minute ago, and I accidentally bent a few of these pins, so I don't want to make that mistake again. But this thing is pretty quick and easy to take apart. I just got to be careful how I do it. Okay, so this is the main computer board. This right here is the Z80 CPU. So this is the brain of the computer right here. Um, it has, like I said, eight data bits in parallel and 16 address bits in parallel. These two chips are a bi-directional uh, data bus driver. These three chips here make up the address bus driver. My clock circuitry is here. I have a crystal oscillator and I can also switch back and forth between that and a triple five timer by using these switches here. And these switches also give me some adjustability of the triple five timer frequency. Um, I like having the ability to either run it fast or run it really slow. Uh, but today we're gonna be running it pretty quick for um, the serial communication through Bluetooth. Let's see here. This board is actually a waveform generator board. It has a digital to analog converter, um, some chip select logic, um, some analog um, op amps for amplification and filtering. And these are all filter capacitors that I can you know, manually select with these switches. So this lets me like digitally synthesize sine waves and triangle waves and square waves and stuff like that. And it has an output port here so I can hook it up to an oscilloscope. Uh, I will not be demonstrating the use of this one though. I just thought I'd point out what it is really quick. This is the memory board. So here's the EEPROM. Um, that, this is a UV EEPROM. That's why I have a piece of tape here to prevent the um, UV light from erasing the program. It doesn't run C or Python or anything like that. It actually, um, it runs what's called Z80 assembly language. Um, assembly language is a programming language that's made up of commands that are specific to a CPU. So every CPU has its own assembly language. So this is written entirely in Z80 assembly. And this chip has all the code that the computer is gonna run. And this is a RAM chip, which I use for just temporarily storing data. This is chip select logic for the RAM and the ROM. And this is actually a frequency selector for the CPU clock and a logic chip that um, allows me to select frequency. And here's a couple other chips that I'm just not using right now. Uh, right now, frequency wise, um, it has a two megahertz crystal, which is actually this guy right here. Um, but the fastest I ever run it right now is one megahertz and I control that by um, selecting the switches. Above one megahertz, it gets kind of glitchy. So I generally, I still have a little more troubleshooting to do. So I generally run it at one megahertz max and it works pretty well. Now, this right here is the actual Bluetooth board. So this is the Bluetooth module itself. It's an HCO5. Uh, this is very commonly used um, with Arduinos. So if you're 
building some sort of Bluetooth application with Arduino, it's very likely that you would use an HCO5. There's tons of tutorials online on how to use an HCO5 with Arduino, but I'm using this with a Z80 and it required a little more uh, ingenuity to get it to work. And the key piece here to get an HCO5 Bluetooth module to talk to a Z80 CPU is this right here. It's a serial UART. So this is the Z80 SIO. SIO stands for Serial Input Output Controller. So I think I mentioned a minute ago that the, um, the Z80 has an 8-bit parallel data bus, meaning it has you know data pins D0 through D7 on the CPU. But the HCO5 takes data in serial. So you have to convert from you have to convert from parallel to serial and back again to get the Z80 CPU to talk to the HCO5. And the way you do that is with the UART. This basically converts parallel data to serial data and back again to create the serial stream for the HCO5. And getting Bluetooth to work properly is all about it's all about programming the CPU to properly initialize the registers in the SIO and also to monitor the status registers and load in data and read data that gets sent back and forth to the HCO5. So it's all about programming the registers in the Z80 SIO. And actually, oh, I gotta grab something else really quick. I have this documentation here, Z80 SIO technical manual, and I've had to read this thing backwards and forwards to get this to work. So there's a whole bunch of chapters here explaining all the registers. Like here's a page explaining what all the registers do, and there's all these status bits that have to be programmed. And so I've had to read this thing, you know, backwards and forwards, like many times in the last couple months to be able to get the SIO to work properly. So this is this documentation has been invaluable to getting the Bluetooth functionality working. So anyways, let's see what's next here. Oh yeah, finally, I have a manual input output board. So this, um, it has a series of switches that I can use to set like an 8-bit byte. Um, two of the switches aren't connected to anything. There's, this is 10 switches overall, but the two on the end are unused, so leaving just these eight. And then I have some buttons that I use to latch that byte into a temporary register, which is then read by the CPU. This is kind of like in, in lieu of having a keyboard and a mouse, I can manually enter a byte by setting these switches and then loading them into a register. Likewise, I have this display here, which will, um, it'll display a, uh, an 8-bit number one byte at a time. And so, you know, it has, the CPU will load, um, you know, data into, when I want to display into another register, which will then, um, actually, it'll activate some EEPROMs that are kind of hiding in here. I don't want to pull these boards apart because these ones are a little harder to pull apart. Um, but yeah, um, this basically allows the, the CPU to display one byte at a time, and it just displays it as a number from 0 to 255. But anyways, um, that, that display is also going to be used to display ASCII codes um, when I'm transmitting um, characters back and forth with Bluetooth. So that's pretty much it for um, just showing you what's going on on the inside. I got to put this thing back together really quick. Being very careful not to bend any pins because I actually did that a minute ago and it was kind of frustrating. So just got to be careful about this. Looks like it's going to get a little better this time. Actually, this is the one I got to be careful about. All right, thank you for being patient with that. Uh, it doesn't take too long to put it back together. And now, of course, every time I put it together like that, I'm always a little nervous to make sure I, you know, will it actually work? I'll plug it in. Okay. All right, so 
here's where we're going to find out if I reassembled everything properly. So I'm going to load. So to, um, to implement the Bluetooth, I have to execute a series of seven commands. And the way I do that is by setting the switches into seven different configurations and manually entering them by latching that command into the register with the, excuse me, into the temporary register by hitting these buttons, which the CPU then reads and executes the um, commands to communicate through Bluetooth. But before I actually get it to talk to the Razer, there's seven commands I have to execute. And the first command simply tests the connection between the CPU to the SIO to the Bluetooth and gets a reply. So it doesn't actually talk to the Razer, it just talks internally between chips to verify everything is working properly. So you'll see four um, ASCII characters appear if this executes properly. You should see 79751310. And the ASCII codes for that are um, OK, carriage return, line feed. So basically it's just saying OK, meaning the command was executed successfully. So let's see if we get that 79751310. There it is, very good, okay. That means it's working. Okay, so that verifies I didn't screw up when I uh, plugged everything back together. So now I'm gonna execute the next command, which is gonna set the Bluetooth HCO5 module into master mode and Master meaning that the Z80 CP, the Z80 computer will initiate the Bluetooth connection with the Razer, as opposed to the Razer initiating the connection. Actually, Razer, the Razer can't initiate a Bluetooth connection. It can only accept a connection that other that another device initiates. So I'm going to enter this command. Whoops. Sometimes I got to reset it. There we go. All right, next command is what's called uh, connection mode zero, which from the perspective of the HCO5 means it only connects to one Bluetooth device at a time, which in this case will be the Razer. So I will execute that one really quick. I did it again. It does this, fr it does this frustrating thing where sometimes if it doesn't read the, um, the uh, line feed character properly, um, the program gets confused. I need to program in like a, like a watchdog timer or something to get, there we go. Okay, it's really easy to fix. All I gotta do is reset it really quick. Okay, uh, the next command is, there's a, um, a little initialization routine for the HCO5 I need to execute really quick. I don't fully understand it, but when I wasn't doing it, I was getting an error code back, and I looked at the documentation and said, oh, I gotta execute this. It's like initialize SPP. If anybody out there knows a lot about Bluetooth, Feel free to explain that in the comments. What's going on here? I think it didn't execute. There we go, okay. All right, so next command. Now this is where I actually start to connect up to the Razer. So I am going to turn on Bluetooth here really quick. Okay, got to execute two um, commands to connect. So do this one first. And then this. See that bond with HC2010-0601. So that is the default name of the HC05 Bluetooth module. So I'm gonna say yes. And then the default code is one, two, three, four, and you'll see it acknowledge here. There we go. We are connected through Bluetooth. So yeah, that's how you connect. But um, really quick, I'm going to disconnect the Bluetooth. And the way I do that is by entering one more code eight. And this one has a little bit more of an elaborate um, response in the ASCII codes, but this next command will disconnect the Bluetooth. Okay, so we're no longer connected, and I'm gonna go back here. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna change the name of the Bluetooth from um, HC2010, whatever it was, to Z80. 
So first thing I need to do is I'm going to uh, delete the HCO5 from the device history. Okay. All right, so that is command number two. So I'm just, I'm just changing the name of the uh, Bluetooth module internally inside the Z80 CPU. Well, that didn't work. Let me try it again. Well, that's frustrating. There we go. Okay. So now I need to set that command six again. So we're going to reconnect through Bluetooth one more time, but this time it's going to say uh, bind to or pair with Z80. Oops. Put Bluetooth on. Make it discoverable. Okay. Now. After this command, it should pair one more time. See that bond with Z80? I'm trying to focus there. There we go. So I'm going to say yes. I'm going to enter the, uh, the pass key again, which is 1234, and you'll see the Z80 acknowledge with the ASCII codes. There we go. So we're connected up again. So, yeah, that's... um. That's pretty cool, um, in my opinion. I mean, I've been trying to figure that out for quite some time now. So the fact that I actually got it working is pretty exciting. Um, so this is really just kind of the beginning um, in terms of how I'm going to use Bluetooth with this. I mean, all it's doing right now is it's literally just pairing with the Razer. I can initiate the connection and I can uh, cancel the connection which is kind of like it's kind of like saying hello and goodbye right that's all I can do right now but I mean even getting to that point was a lot of work and I just think it's cool that I can get my um my you know Z80 computer it's built out of you know chips from the 70s and 80s and I can make it talk to my razor like I think that's pretty cool uh, that's pretty exciting for me so but I have a lot of other plans for this um, I have some older Android phones that I'm gonna make it talk to and um, one thing I would like to do is there are some Android uh, Bluetooth terminal apps that that would allow me to enter arbitrary commands through Bluetooth. And then I could probably, once you can do that, like it's kind of like the sky's the limit. Like you could, potentially I could fully control the uh, Z80 from a smartphone. Like that'd be kind of a cool thing to try. And actually I probably will try that in, in the future, but I'm gonna have to write, between now and then, I'm gonna have to write a bunch of code to make that work because I haven't done that before. So. But anyways, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for today's demonstration. Um, you've probably noticed if you've watched my previous um, Motorola Razor videos, you've noticed this Bluetooth theme. You know, you use Bluetooth to install programs in the Razor and, you know, do all this stuff. But it's, it's kind of a neat feature because, I mean, the Bluetooth on the Razor, it's going to keep working even when, you know, the 2G network shuts down and you can't use it anymore. So I, I like the idea of leveraging the Bluetooth as much as you can because it'll allow me to continue having fun with this thing, you know, the Razer going forward into the future. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for today's demonstration. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, there will be more Z80 computer videos to come as I continue developing new things. So thanks for watching.